Valve announces Ricochet 2. Disney and Marvel obtain rights to make a Batman film and new Loch Ness monster footage emerges online. This is your Looter News. Hey, what's going on, Looters? Pete here on this lovely April 1st to wrap out the week's nerdy news. And apologies if you were really excited to hear about the Loch Ness monster footage. Yeah, he's long dead. It's about time we accepted that. So you probably guessed that Marvel isn't going to be making a Batman movie anytime soon or ever, but in regards to the big shakeup, DC has planned to reveal the identity of its most infamous villain. Yeah. At WonderCon this past weekend, DC Comics announced their plans for the Rebirth event this summer, which will act as a soft reboot for the not-so-stellar New 52 reboot, except for the Court of Owls, which we can all agree was so awesome. Okay, and the Animal Man, and Action Comics when Morrison was on it. Okay, look, we could be here all day if we really want to get into it. With Rebirth also comes the reveal of the Joker's identity. That's right. DC will finally expose the identity of the Clown Prince of Crime. And no, this one is not an April Fool's joke. We get that almost everything can be done with comic book characters, okay? But nobody wants this, right? I don't know, maybe who knows? It might work out for the best, it won't. On the Marvel side of things, if you were really excited to see the Gambit movie happening again, you're gonna have to put a lit on that excitement again. Because the Channing Tatum-led Gambit film set to be released in 2016 is now off the calendar. Tatum has been working on his card throwing skills for the past two years now, and now he's gonna have a little bit more time to practice his Cajun accent too. Magic Mike screenwriter Reed Carolyn has been granted more time to rewrite the script, which was originally set to release in October, and now production of the film won't even start until the end of the year. Yeah, those tears that you're crying are classified as Bayou tears in this situation. The Gambit movie might not be happening soon, but you know what is? Pokemon Go? Pokemon Go is the real-life Pokemon trainer app that will allow you to catch Pokemon in your everyday lives. It has so much hype behind it that it's registering at 50,000 Flavor Flaves. That's equivalent to 300,000 Memphis Bleaks. Hype men aside, the Japanese field tests for the game have started, and of course, information of those tests have leaked. Reddit user Juxlo has shared all the information online. You can find the link on his thread down below. Now, some of the features that will allegedly be in Pokemon Go include all 151 original Pokemon, gym badges, day and night cycles for capturing specific Pokemon, and team building options. Hopefully, this Reddit post won't break our hearts like the fake Nintendo NX controller did. On the topic of things from our childhood that are coming back, we get to go to our senior one season indie anime correspondent, Sarah. Thanks, Pete. It's been over 15 years since FLCL or Fooly Cooly first hit American televisions and then vanished from our lives after six episodes, never to be heard from again. Until now. Adult Swim has announced that they will be joining forces with Animation Studio Production IG to bring fans two new seasons of the show. Each season will be six episodes, and show creator Kazuya Sunomaki will be back for the new seasons as a supervisor. So if you are worried about the original vision being lost or mishandled, you can step away from your keyboards. For the safety of spoiler hating looters out there, we won't give you the summary of what the new seasons will be about, but if you're interested, you can read more about it in the link below. The new season is set to premiere in late 2017. Back to you, Pete. All right, thanks, Sarah. Now, my friends, WonderCon was this past weekend, and we were there, and we chatted with comic book creators Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor, who had a special hand in creating an item in March's vs. Crepe. Tell me a little bit about the concept to do a one-off issue of Harley for Loot Crate. How did that concept come about? You know, the concept the concept of doing a one-shot, well, basically, I'm a Loot Crate subscriber, so right away, I get that monthly box, and I love it, and we thought, how great would it be? Loot Crate has this giant audience that, although they love the media, they love the, the movies and the comics and everything, not everybody reads comics, and we thought, what a great opportunity to maybe not only get in a month, you know, get in a monthly Loot Crate, but also to create a book that... It'll be the first time somebody's ever read a Harlequin comic. We, we wanted a good display of her craziness. When we got the okay to do the book, we said, let's do something completely original. What's something that you remember from your early days as comic book fans that was like a gateway book that was a really important book? Ooh, a gateway. A gateway comic that got me hooked on like reading Like a gateway comics. drug is what you said, yes. right? Okay. My gateway comic drug, I think, was 
a Mad Magazine that I got from the Tooth Fairy. Probably Conan Magazine because there was like a little TNA in it and I was like young enough that I was like, whoa, look like... Boobies. Boobies, yes. So it was like, uh, it was definitely like a, 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 that kind of thing. Also, I love Conan. So, yeah. you know, it's one of those things that yeah. it just kind of got me in and I started reading everything after a while. Superheroes were, weren't initially the first thing. When I started in comics, I started as an anchor. So I was doing mostly the art and the comics. And then in... Uh, Way back in 95, before some of you were born, uh, <laughs> me and a guy named Joe Casada started our own company called Event Comics, and we did Ash and Painkiller Jane and a bunch of characters. They asked Joe and I to run a part of Marvel, which became Marvel Knights, and we worked with a buddy of ours, Kevin Smith, and we did Daredevil, and we did all, a whole bunch of stuff. And then it wasn't until 2001 I started writing, which was I started on Deadpool, which kind of makes sense in the long run. And then... Uh, been writing every everything Jonah Hex I wrote for six years with Justin Gray I had a TV show on sci-fi channel for a while I had a whole bunch of stuff but uh, right now it's Harley Quinn Starfire and whatever madness they yeah. throw at us I had to um, actually pester DC and Marvel like like six times before I finally got a little tiny 11 page backup story. Solo Avengers, I think it was. And then I got like an 11 page story here and a four page story there and then another little 11 page story. And finally I started working up to full books and it took me a long time to like sort of get the snowball rolling, but I, I finally did. This month I like the reversible hat, the Punisher Daredevil hat. I have a neighbor that's 11, my neighbor Fisher. So when I get the box, it's like, for me, for Fisher, for this one, for yeah. James, for James is the other one. Yeah. So um, I geek out at the stuff that I, I, I don't normally see. Um, the other stuff that we're working on right now is we're just finishing up um, our Starfire run. It was 12 issue run and we're finishing that up right now. Um, we are working for um, a comic book company called Aftershock. We're doing Super Zero, which is about a young teenage girl who is trying desperately to become a superhero and failing miserably. And you want to add to that? Yeah, and then we have also uh, Delete, which is first comics, Devil's Do. That's a mini series we did, uh, Amanda did the covers on, and I did it with Justin Gray. About a, it's a sci-fi, it's got a sci-fi bent about a guy protecting a little girl who has some information everybody wants. So, we're, but we're constantly doing new things. I mean, we always, uh, but Harley's our monthly day back in, and you know, we got a lot of stuff, Harley stuff coming up including a little black book, which is some craziness coming up. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Cool. Yes, as you can tell, all of my genie wishes are basketball related. Now, in honor of April Fool's Day, we wanted to know what the best prank you guys ever pulled was. So we went to Twitter to find out you guys came up with the most creative pranks. But the blue ribbon this week goes to at Apayev, I think I said that right, who tricked their boyfriend into dressing up for a romantic dinner at IHOP all the yeses and kudos to the ihop twitter for joining in on the conversation now make sure you guys keep an eye on the loot crate twitter account for more awesome questions and a chance to have your answer featured on next week's episode all right friends that does it for this week's episode of looter news tell us tell us do you guys want to know what the joker's identity is are you upset about the delay of the gambit movie and most importantly what pokemon are you hoping to catch in the wild of our real lives let us know in the comments below give the subscribe button a click and we'll see you next week on an all-new Looter News. Funny!